Dairy is one of those foods that sparks a lot of debate. Some say it's inflammatory and harmful. Others believe it's essential for bone health and a great source of nutrients. So which one is it? Should you be avoiding milk, cheese, and yogurt? Or can they actually be part of a healthy lifestyle? In this video, we'll look at what science says about dairy and inflammation. We'll also talk about different types of dairy, the role of lactose intolerance, hormone exposure, cardiovascular risk, and how to decide if dairy is right for you. Let's dive in. What does inflammatory actually mean. When people say a food is inflammatory, they're usually referring to chronic low-grade inflammation, the kind that contributes to serious health problems over time. Heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, autoimmune conditions, even certain cancers. In medicine, we measure inflammation using blood markers like CRP, or C-reactive protein, ESR, or erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or things like IL-6, interleukin-6. So the question is, does consuming dairy raise these markers in otherwise healthy individuals? For most people, the answer appears to be no. Dairy isn't one food. It's many when we talk about dairy. There's a big difference between a serving of plain Greek yogurt, a scoop of processed cheese sauce, a glass of raw goat's milk, ice cream loaded with sugar and additives. Dairy is a category. It's not a single product. It includes foods with very different fat content, protein structures, bacterial content, and nutrient profiles. So anytime time we look at research about dairy, we have to ask, what kind of dairy are they studying? Who's consuming it? And what are they comparing it to? Now let's talk about what the research says about inflammation. Several controlled studies have looked at dairy consumption and inflammatory markers. In people who do not have a dairy allergy or lactose intolerance, most of these studies found no significant increase in inflammation. One well-designed study even found that dairy did not elevate markers of gut inflammation when compared to a baseline. Another found that fermented dairy products like yogurt may actually reduce inflammatory markers, likely due to beneficial bacteria. Of course, some of these studies were funded by the dairy industry, which always deserves scrutiny, but not all were. Overall, the data suggests that for the average healthy adult, moderate dairy consumption does not promote systemic inflammation. Individual variation, lactose intolerance, and dairy sensitivity. Now let's talk about individual reactions. Roughly two-thirds of the global population loses the enzyme lactase after childhood. This is the enzyme needed to digest lactose, which is the sugar found in milk. This is called lactose intolerance, and it's not the same as a milk allergy. The symptoms can include bloating, gas, cramping, diarrhea, and in some cases even joint or muscle aches, indirectly caused by gut inflammation. If you experience symptoms like these after consuming dairy, you might benefit from an elimination trial where you avoid dairy for several weeks, then reintroduce it and track how you feel. You can also try lactose-free dairy products or take lactase enzyme supplements if you tolerate them better. What about saturated fat and heart health? Well, another concern with dairy, especially full-fat varieties, is its saturated fat content. Saturated fats can increase LDL cholesterol in some people, and elevated LDL is associated with atherosclerosis, the narrowing and stiffening of arteries over time. That said, recent large meta-analyses have found no consistent association between moderate dairy consumption and heart disease in the general population. Some individuals, particularly those with genetic lipid disorders, may still want to limit full-fat dairy, but for many people, moderation is key, and low-fat or fermented options may be preferable. Calcium, bone health, and hip fractures. We've all heard the phrase, milk builds strong bones, but here's what the data shows. Countries with the highest dairy consumption also tend to have the highest rates of hip fractures. That doesn't mean dairy causes bone weakness, but it does tell us that calcium isn't the full picture. Bone health depends on vitamin D, magnesium, weight-bearing exercise, hormonal balance, and overall dietary patterns. So if you don't tolerate dairy, don't worry, you can still build and maintain strong healthy bones through other means. Let's address one more area of concern, hormones in milk. In the United States, some dairy cows are treated with recombinant growth hormone, RBST, to boost milk production. 
This is banned in Canada and much of Europe. In addition, even untreated cows, especially those that are pregnant, naturally produce estrogens, which can end up in the milk. Some studies have linked these hormone residues to early puberty in girls, hormonal imbalances, and the potential increased risk of hormone-sensitive cancers. The evidence isn't conclusive, but it's enough to make some consumers choose organic, hormone-free, or goat sheep dairy instead. So should you eat dairy? Here's how I advise patients. If you tolerate it well, if you're not lactose intolerant or allergic, if you're choosing high quality, minimally processed dairy, then moderate dairy consumption can be part of a healthy diet. But if you experience bloating, fatigue, skin issues, or joint discomfort, Dairy may be worth eliminating and reintroducing to evaluate its effects on your body. Fermented dairy products like plain yogurt or kefir tend to be better tolerated and may offer probiotic benefits. Let's recap some of the key takeaways. Dairy is not automatically inflammatory. Most people tolerate dairy without increased inflammation. Fermented dairy may offer health benefits, especially for the gut. Lactose intolerance is very common and worth testing for. Some people may want to limit full fat dairy due to saturated fat. Hormone exposure from conventional milk is a valid concern. Calcium is important, but dairy isn't the only source. As with most things in nutrition, context matters. The type of dairy, the quantity, your personal tolerance, and your overall health profile all make a difference. I'm Dr. John Schubach. If you found this helpful, please share it with somebody who's had questions about dairy and feel free to leave a comment with your own experience. Have you eliminated dairy? Did it change anything for you? Or is it something you include in moderation? And don't forget to subscribe for more medical content. I'll see you in the next video.